Hello and welcome to the fifth video in the Ardu Plane Pixhawk Mission Planner series. Now, in the last video, we did the Maiden. So hopefully if you're following along, you'll be where I am now, which is where I have now have a vehicle. I've actually taken the wings off so it's easy to move around. Uh, this is my little Nano Talon from ZOHD. And we've put the Pixhawk inside here and it's flying and we can continue. Now, the idea with this is that this is the last video in the first five videos, which form the basic part of the series. Then I'm going to another five or six videos which will be the intermediate part where I'll show you some more funky stuff including how to add FPV but I'll talk about that briefly here and then there'll be like a advanced series if you want to think of it like that another five or six videos with some really cool hits and tips I'm going to do that for both the Ardu plane which we're in the middle of right now and also starting the Ardu copter one two where we'll put a pix hook on a multi-rotor now, going through all of the initial videos where we've gone through the basic setup of this, there have been some fantastic questions. All those questions can actually be answered by searching in the Ardu Pilot documentation. But what I thought would be a nice way to finish this basic set of videos off for Ardu Plane would be to collect those together, put them on a slide and go through and actually answer them and show you how I find the answers. Because sometimes, surprise, surprise, you will ask me a question as viewers, subscribers, and Patreons, I don't know the answer to. I do not keep all the information about Ardu Copter, Ardu Pilot, Betafly, iNav, Vector, Multirotors, OpenTX, all that stuff in my head so I can answer it. There's a lot in there, but I'm getting old, so you know, you bear with me. I do have to do a bit of searching. But the majority of the stuff that you've asked me is actually in the Ardu Pilot documentation. So hopefully by watching this video, you'll find out a little bit more. We'll get the answers to those questions, because if one person's answered it, I can pretty much guarantee there'll be a couple of dozen people who've also thought about it, but haven't got around to writing in the comments. And it'll show you how I find the answers so that if you want the answers to something else that we haven't talked about yet in the series, you can go and find it out. This video and series has been made with the kind help and support of 3DXR. 3DXR.co.uk are based here in the UK, up in the northeast of England. And for me, they're the go-to place for anything that's Pixhawk, Mission Planner, or RD Pilot related. They stock a full range of Pixhawk style flight controllers, a wide range of T-Motor, ESCs, motors, and props, and also have a full range of sensors for your Pixhawk builds as well, particularly things like the Lightwear and Bennywick, LiDAR, and Rangefinders. In addition to all the Pixhawk technology for both multi-rotors and fixed wing, they also stock a full range of radio gear from people like FreeSky and others, and also stock a wide range of FPV equipment. So if you're looking for telemetry radio, super accurate GPS sensors, Pixhawk, large scale UAV systems, then check out 3DXR. There's a link in the description. So the first couple of questions that I've had revolve around FPV. Now the Pixhawk system that we have put inside this model isn't really designed for FPV. Um, there are systems that you can add into it. So things like the Healing system, which I've talked about in other videos, which is a very expensive system, but transmits all the telemetry into a ground station along with a video signal. There's things like the T12 radio that I've looked at a while ago. Uh, those give you um, a view out the front of the model. Now, for those who are eagle-eyed, spotted, I already added, because I'm in the middle of shooting the next lot of videos, um, a special little board in here that actually does that for me. That is something called the Hollybro Micro OSD V2. And that will plug into the Pixhawk, into a camera and video transmitter, and give you an on-screen display as well as FPV. Now, there's nothing to stop you putting basic FPV stuff in, you know, if it's a plane like this, for example, you know, sticking a camera in the front and a video transmitter underneath and wiring it up, but not having it connected to the Pixhawk. But if you want an on-screen display with a Pixhawk, then something like that Hollybro unit is where you need to go. Again, full video on how you set all that up and a lot more detail on FPV coming in probably the next intermediate video. There are a couple of other things that I've been asked about. Um, one is, can you use the DJI HD system with it? Uh, the answer is, yes, you can. Uh, the DJI receiver outputs SBUS, and it's an SBUS connection into our little friend, the Pixhawk. And you also, uh, unfortunately, can't plug in the telemetry stuff yet into the Pixhawk. 
Um, I explained all of this in a video that I did about iNav and the uh, DJI digital HD FPV system. What it boils down to is the goggles for that system only understand beta flight uh, telemetry information, not the Mavlink that this thing sends out. So until that is fixed, uh, that is not something that you can do. But you could still control it using the S Plus out from the receiver into your Pixhawk, and you can still get the HD image back. You're just not going to get any telemetry, like the overlay of battery voltage and that kind of stuff too. If FPV is something that you are really, really interested in, uh, and I am, I, I love flying FPV. Now, most of the people who are installing Pixhawks are installing Pixhawks because they are building semi-pro systems. They want the most bulletproof setup possible. There are other hardware options available for Ardu Plane and Ardu Copter. And if you're interested in FPV, they might be a better choice if you don't want to have third-party boards and limited configurability. Uh, the two that I've done here, one was the Ardu Plane on the Omnibus F4 Pro. Uh, that was a series um, that put it on a little 20 pound flight controller. Still have all the great functionality of Ardu Plane, uh, but it also has the onboard on-screen display. Similarly with the Matek F405, that uh, was another build that I did, went into an AR wing, uh, worked beautifully well. So it still has all the functionality and bulletproof backup of the Ardu Pilot firmware, but on an open piece of technology that's an awful lot cheaper than a Pixhawk if you can't have got Pixhawk money and will give you a great FPV on-screen display experience that all happens on the board and Ardu uh, Pilot actually supports that. Has for about a year now as I'm recording this video. So the next question then is about what about if I'm not using the same Pixhawk you are. The Pixhawk Cube is a relatively expensive system. There are lots of other versions about, and I've already talked about two of them, the Omnibus board and also things like the Matek. But there are different versions of the Pixhawk hardware platform available from different places like Holybro and others. So the thing that I would recommend is when you are searching for anything like this, is all the information that you're after is going to be in the ardupilot.org documentation and you can just google stuff and all the information is in here so for example there's the black cube that we've just been looking at you've got all the information about what they call open hardware <laughs> the the non are in here is i always find quite funny but if you want to find out how you put together your pixhook for mini flight controller here is all the detail the software setup is exactly the same as what we have been through in this basic series just how you wire it up is a little bit different and this is all of the hardware that is supported so if you have any of the boards listed in here then you can install Ardu Pilot onto it get it to work and have some fun another great question is well hang on a minute, what do I need to do differently if I want to build a different size uh, plane? And this is something I did talk about in the series, but it's worthwhile reiterating. This is a relatively small uh, vehicle that actually comes apart, so you can actually stick it in a backpack, uh, for, or it's easy to transport, and then when you get to the field, you can kind of put it all together. I purposely put it in here because I like these smaller vehicles. Um, the biggest I get to is about meter 1.2 meter wingspan. But the Pixhawk system is really, really good at not only flying relatively small vehicles like this or a 600 millimeter wing as we've done with the Omnibus build last summer, but it's also really, really good at flying huge vehicles as well. The process to set it up, whether it's a, you know, this little thing or you know, something with a three meter wingspan, is exactly the same. There is no difference in the process that you go through or the steps that you follow to set up Pixhawk in something like this versus something in a vehicle that's going to fly for three hours and do mapping missions. Again, there'll be more detail on the extra things that you can do and also check out the Big Boys Toys playlist. There's information in there about camera triggering and stuff if you want to have a look at that in advance of some of the, the rest of the series being created here as part of the Pixhawk 2020 stuff. Now, another great question that I get a lot is, well, um, I'm really struggling, I'm stuck, I can't arm it. Um, 
we kind of went through this again in the series, but again, this is something else that warrants um, a bit of a test. Again, if you're not sure about any of this, I would recommend watch the entire basic series. Following each of the steps will keep you out of trouble. The nice thing about arming with the um, Ardu Pilot technology is if you have it connected to the ground station via a USB cable, I've got my little black cover on the USB cable port there, um, and you try and arm it, always take your prop off of course, uh, it will show you on the ground station exactly what the problem is. And if you remember, we actually had this issue when I was trying to do it. I had this issue about the airspeed sensor, which looks like it was a holdover for when the cube that I'm using in here was used in a previous build. And again, to find the answer to this, I could Google for something like troubleshooting arming. That's not giving me a great answer. Let me try something like trouble arming. Let me just search for arming. And there is the arming plane page. And on here is all of the things that are checked, how it all works, what things can stop it, how you arm the plane, how to disarm the plane, and reasons for refusing to arm. Again, all of this is in the documentation, easily findable with a relatively simple bit of searching. Now there are a load of pre-arm safety checks, but here's a load of the different errors that you can get in the ground station when you're trying to arm. Now the way that this works has been the same for the past five or six years so don't worry about it it's quite common when you first go to arm that you'll find a little problem but here's an explanation of what all of the errors actually mean so if you come into an arming issue then this is what you're going to find so let's actually let me show you so say for example we have this check error so if i did search for ardu plane check angle underscore max error there we are, we can actually get straight to that page. So if that was the error that was on your ground station, try to arm it with the USB cable plugged in and that's what you had, then you would actually find that by just putting the error with Ardu Plane into the Google search engine and it'll probably find the part of the wiki that you need. Go and have a look at that and it'll tell you what the problem is and probably the parameter that you need to go and have a look at to change to fix it. Another good question is what do the LEDs on the GPS mean? You'll notice when it boots up, the LEDs are flashing and the LEDs on the GPS are this particular one, um, but lots of the GPS units that are around here are actually showing you what's going on. There's the initial flashing of red and blue as it's calibrating, and then it's gonna flash blue as it is getting ready to arm. Then once it's got a GPS lock, it'll flash green. And then when you arm it, there'll be a tone from the buzzer and these lights will go a solid green. Now, these lights actually tell you a lot of information. And again, the detail is actually in the wiki. So let me show you how to find that information if you are uh, struggling with it and you're not sure what the lights mean on your GPS. So this time what we'll do is we'll search, uh, just do a Google search for GPS LED Ardu plane. And then there we are, we have an LED meaning. Now this is for general Pixhawk, but the LED meanings have not changed. So whether or not you're looking at the LED on an, another kind of Pixhawk, or you're looking at the LEDs on the GPS, it's exactly the same. So flashing green means you are disarmed, but you have a GPS lock. And then when you have a solid green, you are ready to rock and roll. Another good question I've had about arming is the safety switch. Now the safety switch on here is part of the GPS, um, but other Pixhawks have it as a little flying lead with a little light on. Now uh, the Pixhawks have had this auxiliary safety switch for a long time and it's there just to make sure that you are ready to fly. So the way it would work historically was that you would press the arming switch to be a tone and then you'd arm the board and that was turn the Pixhawk that you had physically, you know, connected with the model and you were ready and then you couldn't accidentally arm it by pushing the throttle to the low right position on the radio, which is the classic way of arming the Pixhawk. Um, lots of people turn this safety switch off now including me, I don't use it, uh, but there is confusion about how you do that. And of course, the simple way to find out how to do that is to do some searching for that safety switch. 
So let's go and search for safety switch. And unfortunately that's not bringing anything up. So let's try safety switch disable. That's just bringing me the parameter list up. That isn't very helpful. And this sometimes happens. You don't always get it first time, but I want to show you this uh, because if you persevere, you will get the answer you want. So Ardu pilot safety switch disable. Let's do a Google search for that. And there we are, ardupilot.org. And there is about the safety switch. That's the other safety switch I was talking about. And configuring the safety switch is done by BRD underscore safety enable. Uh, zero disables the switch, having it one turns it on. You can even have a safety mask, which is actually in the advanced parameters in Mission Planner. And that shows you which outputs are disabled. So hopefully that helps explain that to you. Again, a little bit of a simple search should find you the answer to a question like that. Last question that we'll look at then is about mounting the pix hook. Now, as I went through as we were putting this in, my advice would always be work extremely hard to mount the pix hook the right way up with a little arrow facing towards the nose of the plane. And that is the default orientation. It will understand then for the accelerometers, the gyros and the onboard compasses, how the pix hook is installed. However, there are instances where that isn't an option and maybe you needed to put the pix hook under here in the belly so it's actually upside down. So what do you need to change if that's the case? Well, the good news is the pix hook support's been orientated pretty much any way you want to. So to find that out, let's uh, Google search for something like mounting pix hook upside uh, down. And there we have it. It's actually in one of the forums. Let's scroll down here and there we are. Somebody's immediately given the answer. It's AHRS orientation. So if I search for that, that will take me to the mounting the Ardu pilot documentation and the complete parameter list. So if I want to look at what, what the parameter does, I can go in there, press control F when I'm in the browser. Again, put that in. And there is the full detail of exactly what I need to change. So that would be, I'd go into the full parameter list inside Mission Planner and I would put in the setting. Now the trick with this is whenever you do it, um, you do have to reboot your board and you're going to have to redo the auto level, but triple check that the model works in the right way. So as you lift the nose in the physical world, the horizon drops in the... Uh, virtual horizon that's actually part of the ground station and go through each of the tests. My advice would be whenever you can always mount it in the default position uh, and as a last resort mount it in another way and play with that particular setting. So hopefully that's been interesting, answered those kind of uh, questions that I've had as part of the series. Please continue to comment and ask the questions. It's great to get the interaction to keep putting the answers into the upcoming videos. And hopefully what it's give you an idea of is how easy it is to find the answers to questions inside the fantastic Ardu pilot documentation. Uh, I very rarely have a situation where I'm trying to figure something out and I can't with two or three searches either in the documentation or in Google, I can't find the answer. But stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed, have the bell notification icon turned on because there's the uh, intermediate series coming for Ardu plane and also I'll be starting very shortly the Pixhawk on a multi-rotor basic series as well. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.